Hello, welcome everyone. Happy Wednesday. My name is Angel. We are back this week, of course, with Pavon Agarwal, CEO and founder of Angel AI. And Pavon, do you want to introduce our special guest today? Our special guest live from Florida, Boca Raton, Michelle. Now I'm going to, I hope they don't get this wrong, Belisari. Yep, it's exactly the way it's spelled. Well done. <laughs> So Michelle is a successful real estate broker um, in South Florida, and she was very kind to share her time today, and along with that, to share her immense knowledge in real estate and real estate lending and so forth. And we will get us some really amazing coaching from one of the greatest, if not the greatest. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> and so... Michelle, tell us a little bit about your background. How did you get into sure. real estate and and what is your secret of success? So thank you for having me on today. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to hearing all about your AI product. I uh, started in real estate in 2003 after a successful career in pharmaceutical sales and consumer health product sales with Novavax and Warner Lambert slash Pfizer. And I uh, got into real estate when the market was uh, ramping up in the mid 2000s and then uh, had to pivot after it crashed. And so my flex is real estate niches. I say I'm a niche witch or the queen bee of <laughs> niches. And I love sharing with other agents how to add a listing or buyer niche to their business model, especially in today's environment. Um, I wholeheartedly believe in by creating a three-legged table with a focus on some listing uh, niches and then bringing in the buyer side, you have a really nice, robust business that is not as susceptible to the economic flow that goes on. And that's what I dealt with in 2010 through 2012, which is when I decided to jump into probate real estate, which led to seniors downsizing, a little divorce. And right now on the buyer side, I'm very hot on uh, relocation buyers. So um, I've just enjoyed the ride. I've been in the business 20 years. I love to speak on this and um, coach and train other agents and uh, like to see them succeed. I mean, it's all about execution, right? So you can learn, 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 but if you're not executing, you're kind of dead in the water. So now is a good time to be learning because it is a little slower, but at the same time, what are you executing for fourth quarter and for the next year? So I'm a mom of uh, two adult daughters. One just got married. Yay. Yeah, congratulations. And uh, my husband and I are celebrating our 34th wedding anniversary in October. Awesome. Very exciting year. It's been busy. Like probably a good year to be a little slower than usual. <laughs> <laughs> so how many agents do you think you've trained over the last 20 years? Oh, I don't know. I mean, a lot because I, I always done an educational component as an agent to agents. It started with social media and Facebook back in the day. I spoke with Miami Board of Realtors on uh, first time home buyers back then uh, and learning every aspect of down payment assistance, the tax credit side, all of that to help buyers at that time try to get property. So, you know, we're kind of been there, done that in some aspect and continued with teaching them how to use Facebook and then segueing into Instagram and social media. And so um, I started really doubling down on the riches and real estate niches idea in 2020 when we were in lockdown and created a course called the probate real estate boot camp and i i speak on webinars frequently create my own have events go to events so i don't know hopefully a lot <laughs> amazing that's amazing so um now if i'm a real estate agent and i want to get coaching from you. How do I go about doing that? Oh, you can follow me on Instagram. You can take a look at my website. It's called the Real Estate Niches Academy. 
I'm always doing some sort of free training that leads into some other um, paid training, but I'm always dropping tips and information on my social media channels on how to get involved in a niche, why it makes sense to have one in your business, and how to layer it with the tools that we have, whether that's social media, YouTube, uh, TikTok, blogging. And so I think agents just have to be thinking a little bit more outside of the box in regard to what's going to work for them and also uh, having a little less competition in certain niches. So expireds are great and FISBOs are great, but that's what a bulk of agents are doing. So how about a road less travel where the sellers are, are really motivated because they have a life reason for selling property? Okay. Or on the relocation side, um, people that are moving particularly here to South Florida, they come to Florida, no state income tax. They are moving businesses here. They're moving themselves here. And not only can you get the relocation move, but you might be able to get the referral side of where they're coming from if you get it um, at the right time in that funnel for them. Wow, that's, that's a great, great strategy. Yeah. So relocation, what other, what other niches are you bewitching or would you recommend? <laughs> <laughs> On the buy side, I love the relocation side for sure. Um, I think too, there's an opportunity with um, people that are downsizing, who are wanting to travel, they don't need the big house anymore, uh, or there's a variety of reasons why they are, um, oh, my light just went out, uh, why they are making a move could be because someone is going to uh, assisted living, they could be going to memory care. So downsizing is a niche that I believe, again, there's the three divorce, downsizing, and uh, death where people really have to sell the property, whether it's in probate or somebody, they can't maintain the house or they're splitting up. So the court is making them, you know, sell the house. And I assume in your training courses, you actually dig into how to find those leads and how to mine that data. I do. I do. That's the, the secret sauce to the probate real estate boot camp. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to apply that out of you here, right? <laughs> how to find leads for free and um, how to teach your VAs to find them too. So you don't have to actually do all the heavy lifting, but also how to market yourself, how to brand yourself, how to work with and partner with attorneys and just, you know, build relationships, you know? Yeah, and, and I think this is something loan officers can do as well, not just realtors. Yeah, you know, networking, we kind of got away from it because of the pandemic. But even before, you know, there's a, um, a strategy to networking. And I always tell this to not just agents, but entrepreneurs and business people. It's like, if you're going to go to a networking event, know why you're going, know who you want to talk to. And if you're there for 30 minutes and you've satisfied that, feel free to leave. You don't have to like be out every night. But I think strategic networking makes sense. It's like when you go to conferences, um, plan ahead before you go to conferences. I just did a free uh, freebie takeaway uh, for a conference that I was at recently with 15 takeaways that I had, but also conference tips. So like a lot of conferences have apps. So get on the app before you go. Know who you want to connect with. Send them a DM on Instagram. Um, the woman who had the movie Molly's Game was a keynote speaker at Inman a few years ago. And I reached out to her behind the scenes. I said, hey, is there any way we can interview you? And she's like, absolutely. So we connected because I was also speaking at Inman at that time. So I was on a panel. And so I was like, oh, this is great. And we got a nice little interview with her. You can connect with people that way. And loan officers for sure can really up their strategy of networking and be smart about where you're networking. You know? Yeah, I think that's a great tip, like going in with a plan. And also, like, I've had that experience with conferences. We go to a lot of conferences and people will reach out on LinkedIn beforehand. Hey, I see you're going to be at this conference. Love to connect with you. And yeah. it really helps break the ice. Yeah. And, you know, that person knows to be on the lookout for you. And exactly. I think that's a great strategy. And doing those, like, you're seeing a real uptick on private dinners and coming in the night before and 
uh, private masterminds at 630 in the morning before the conference starts. I mean, there's a lot of things. Not only can you attend, but how about this? Create your own little meetup and attract people to you versus you bouncing all over the place. So that's the reverse strategy with that. Yeah. So bottom line, a lot of discipline, a lot of hard work. Always. <laughs> So when you're working with new realtors or I, like Kavan said, this could be a good tip for originators too. Do you recommend picking just one niche or multiple and how do they figure out which is the, which is the niche for them? One. I would start with one and then see where it goes. So I started with first time home buyers back when I first was new, but then I did pivot finally and went into probate. But what I found was the senior market aligned so much with probate. Mm -hmm. And so I just reinvented a secondary niche. They're really kind of on par. I get, I get probate referrals and I get senior downsizing referrals more so than anything. And so I think they, they kind of go like this together. So you could, I think, start with one, sit down and think about what you love, what you're passionate about, what can you talk about all day long? You know, I, I say this to agents all the time, like, what's your hobby? So for example, I do a, a Q and a mastermind once a month with my students. And, um, you know, I was talking to somebody about where they lived and what they were doing. And it turns out he loves to camp and hike and whatnot is upstate New York. And I said, so are you any in any Facebook groups where other people who like to do that are? And he's like, well, not really. I said, well, if it were me, I'd seek those Facebook groups out. I'd get involved and be a resource. You don't want to sell yourself, but be a resource. You know, are there certain brands that you like? He's like, yeah. I'm like, tell me about it. Like right now, Stanley's huge, right? Everybody loves the Stanley. But I'm like, are there some niche brands or brands that you really like? Look for those conversations, go in the groups, look in the search bar and just put some things in there, right? And see if there's old conversations that you can add to. It's all about getting known, right? But you can do it without being like hard selling all the time. So that was like, he's like, I never really thought about that. And then I said, well, let me ask you this. I said, where you camp at? Uh, do you sell real estate there? And he said, sometimes I said, what if you created a referral scenario with someone who lives there full time? I said, now you've got like somebody you can refer to frequently and vice versa. And so when you're in these groups or you're talking about, hey, I'm getting ready to go on my camping trip. This is the equipment that I'm taking. Tag those brands, by the way, on Instagram. I said, now you're building something. You're not just doing a one-off. So like my husband uh, is a boat captain. He runs a 42 foot sport fishing boat and we charter it. And so I do a little bit more and more on my personal Soboka feed, which is my lifestyle brand to help promote it. But that's his niche. It's not my niche. His niche is fishing, 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 and fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say fishing? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, but I'm going to do a video about it because at the end of the day, he has a niche with it. One, it's sport fishing. It's not yachting. It's not lake fishing. It's ocean sport fishing. And the other thing is he has certain types of fish that he goes after, which I thought about it this morning. I'm like, it's kind of niche. He goes after like mahi mahi, which we also call dolphin. No, it's not flipper. So don't freak out. Um, sailfish catch and release tuna wahoo like he goes for that sport fish right versus bass or trout or snook you know something like that so he's got his own niche everybody can have a niche right um if you're not sure what jumps out at you take a look at celebrity niches all you got to do is look at the Kardashians. You can look at Ryan Reynolds. You can look at any celebrities out there right now. They all have a niche brand. And that's just an easy breezy, great example. When you're scrolling along and TikTok and stuff, start being, um, you know, a little more 
uh, specific about what you're looking at to see what these people are doing. It's like a masterclass every day on social media. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> That's a great point. Look at what people who are successful in social media are doing and learn from them. Yeah. All right, well, we got two great tips from you today. Oh, I have more. I've, oh, I've, I've, I've been, I'm extracting free information from you. That's my job is to get it free out of you for my, for my listeners here. That's okay. I don't mind giving away. <laughs> and for you guys that are watching live, remember, we'll keep an eye on the chat. So ask your questions and we will get them answered in the chat. Yes. And don't forget to like and subscribe because if you do a lot of that, I think that might convince Michelle to give away a few more free. <laughs> No, and... <laughs> I can give you. I I do have. I do have. I have something that I just created. Um, so I will make sure I get you the link for it. But it is. It's mainly for uh, real estate agents, but loan officers certainly could benefit from it. Uh, it's fifty real estate niches you need to know about. Wow, that sounds great. So once again, how does someone register or get a hold of your uh, training classes? They can they can either DM me on Instagram at the Michelle B and that's Michelle with one L. They can send me an email at sipsocialcell at gmail.com or they can just visit sipsocialcell.com. That's my website. And how do you spell it? S I P S O C I L S C L L. Yep. Com? Yep. Sip a little coffee or a little wine. Yeah. Social Sip, socialize social. and sell. <laughs> Sip social cell. Okay, I get it now. Hey, Angel, can you put that in the YouTube live stream, uh, live yes. chat? You got it. All right. That's great. I love the branding, Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. It is. It's very fun. It's very I book over time. Believe in personal brands, you know? Absolutely. Okay. All right. So now, Michelle, how are you using AI? So I like, you know, I love ChatGPT. So I can only say this, no matter what your age, you should always try the new apps, just even if you eyeball them, right? Because you never know what's going to resonate. And I'm going to say something that's going to shock you all, which that came out late December of last year, at least where I was aware of it. And I use it for everything, literally from crafting emails to crafting re-engagement text messages to creating blog posts in my voice and tone to creating social media posts to creating modules for my courses landing pages listing descriptions um anything to do with real estate i literally use it and i have the app on my phone as well so i i know you can tell it to say something in like Arnold Schwarzenegger's tone. How did you teach it to use your voice and tone? I think it gets to know it the more that you're using the app is my understanding. So if like there's certain tones I like, like I would say like, oh, do a social media post about uh, the weekend events going on in Boca Raton for hashtag so Boca, use the voice of Kris Jenner and we'll see what comes <laughs> out. It's hilarious or Goldie Hawn, it's hilarious, you know, I, so you can play around with it that way, but it does get to know your voice and, and intonation. And now there's some things that are implemented where you can say what, what your business is and do you want it to be professional and this and that. I, and also the Chrome plugins that they have. So, you know, um, Canvas got a Chrome plugin. So I did something the other day. I said, create a list like a two column list of something, something, something. Anyways, it put it together. It was pretty interesting. Um, but literally, I think for creatives in particular, and those creatives that may be a little ADD, ADHD too, our brains can get really tired because we're kind of going all the time. And what I'm finding is it's an assistant for me. Literally, it's just like a part of my team now. And the amount of creative assets I have been able to put out there. I don't think I would have ever gotten to this place with even my courses and landing pages as quickly because you have to think so much about what you're going to write and it basically assists us. But as agents, 
It's amazing. So like with my lifestyle blog, Soboka, I have a prompt that I put together that um, I'm, I'm putting in a little package now, which is how to basically um, create like a certain post that highlights the brand and the location that you're in, right? So I, I just think there's so many things like, I think the fun thing about it is like, you can go, okay, this buyer has ghosted me. What is a fun but respectful text message I can send <laughs> to a buyer that has gone MIA to re-engage with them? And it will give you one and then you can regenerate it or ask for five more. So I ended up with a bunch and one of them was like, like have we broken up? <laughs> that was like a whole thing. But that's way better than, hey, circling back, just want to see if, you know, are you still interested in buying property here in South Florida? So I did that. One of the other things I did because I'm niche is I said, create social media quotes that are from me that give examples of why it's important to have a niche in your business. And it knocked out all these things. And one of them was having a niche is like um, redoing part of your home. It's a new piece, but it's a needed addition or something like that. It was like, oh yeah, this is great. You know, like it's not the same old thing. So I love it. I just, I'm having a ball with it. Yeah, I think there's tremendous value in, in chat GPT, what they call large language models for yes. uh, marketing and content generation. Yeah. Um, you know, we use it, you know, ourselves internally a lot for our marketing. And often though, I, I think it's a good first draft. It gets it breaks writer's block. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But then it, it after a while they all start sounding the same. They start sounding very um generic. So you do have to take the first draft and yes. and, and make it valuable. Yeah. And you have to personalize it. And yes. you have to make sure you're not um, going against any copyright issues and whatnot. You need to run sh run it through certain platforms uh, like Grammarly and things like that to make sure you're not plagiarizing. So like when I write a blog, it will give me like the outline and then I'll ask it to expand the outline. So like I did one, say, for example, on I think it was Pompano Beach. And then I inserted what I know because the information can be wrong. So I, I went through it and I'm like, that's wrong. That doesn't sound right. Mm -hmm. Run it through. Okay, this is fine. And then I add my, you know, my zhuzh on top of it, which is I live, work and play in South Florida and I have for 45 years. What do I know about Pompano? Yeah. Please make sure to add the following things to this blog post. Da, 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 da. Please create the headlines um for the blog post please create a description for my youtube video for this blog post so i think i think anyone who says that they don't want to use it is missing a, a golden opportunity yeah yep i agree 100 percent. and there's there's a lot it could do with it but it's like you said you have to check it it does get it wrong because it is probabilistic it's statistical yeah and and i'm not going to geek out today and go into exactly how it works that's a different conversation <laughs> which which i'm going to put a plug in for david lincoln lincoln on lending uh when you all get a chance uh register for lincoln on lending blog i am releasing a series of podcasts with david lincoln um, he's the number one blog on the for for lending and real estate he gets a million downloads a week and i'm releasing a series of podcasts with him that i did with him where i'm walking you through the inner workings of of AI and answering the big question: When will it become conscious? <laughs> right. Which, which, if you or may or may not be aware, there's been a lot of talk by the uh, by Altman and Bill Gates and Musk, and they've been in this. I think last week they were in a closed door Senate hearing about putting some regulations, and because this thing can go out of control, blah blah blah. Which I disagree with most of that. I think uh, the train already left the station. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes and yes and no. Yes and no. I I don't I don't uh, 
it all becomes boils down to the definition of consciousness, uh, which is what I will be discussing on on the series of podcasts, and we'll put it in very simple language, boil it down to make it fun and interesting. Um, you know, no math, no no uh, no physics, no quantum mechanics, but we will explain it. But we will explain but it in a way. Are you, are you going to use ChatGPT to give you an outline for your podcast? I'm just kidding. No. Because <laughs> ChatGPT is is run by people who are on the other side that wants to. Regulate. Yeah. yeah. They, they want to control it for themselves. Uh, so, uh, and there's no way ChatGPT is going to be able to come up with original thoughts. Uh, so anyways, um, so that's coming up. Um, and Angel, you could put the uh, link in our lending onto the live live chat so people can can click on that and register for that podcast. And that's going to be fun, exciting stuff. So uh, we're going to switch gears a little bit. Okay. Angel, if you can bring up, we talked a lot about ChatGPT, and I know Michelle has not used Angel AI yet, and she's going to love it. So we're going to show her the difference between Angel AI and ChatGPT because cool. big the main issue is that Angel AI is deterministic. It's absolute. It gives you absolute correct answers. Mm. So ChatGPT is good for creativity. You could say it's not really creativity. Human beings are creative and machines are not. You new content to work off to, to break your own creative yeah. logjam so you can get started. Okay. Um, Angel AI is not there. Right. We're, we're, we're doing something very different, which is financial services. That means when, when Angel AI says, like imagine Angel AI, if it was your bank, right? If it was running, if it was managing your bank account and you asked it, what is my bank balance, right? It has to be exactly right. Right. You, you don't want to double check that, right? If you ask chat, chat GPT, what is my bank balance? It might throw you a number and yeah, right. I'd be okay with them adding a couple of zeros. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're like, right? that doesn't look right. <laughs> yeah. So so Angel AI is solving a very different problem. And in it is it is a financial services banking application. So it has to be right every single time. It can okay. never be wrong. Um, and so it's not creating marketing content. Creating marketing content, you can be wrong because it's just there's no there's no money involved. There's marketing and 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 it's up to you as the user to 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 curate it and 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 correct it so go ahead Angel. compliance rules <laughs> yes yes it's also up to you to to verify that whatever it creates is in compliance so now angel ai does take your raw content you can actually give it like here's here's what i want on my landing page and you can you know you give it your text and pictures and so forth and it will create a landing page for you and publish it and the difference between that and 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 chat gpt is that it knows all the compliance rules so mm -hmm. if you're a loan officer and it creates a landing page for you it's going to have all the right license numbers and and everything exactly the way it's supposed to be for the states that you're licensed in right and that as you know is the is the real hard part in this business um you know more so in the lending business than real estate you know the the level of regulation lending is is, is off mm -hmm. the chart yeah so go ahead angel take over and while you're doing that, don't forget to like and subscribe and share your love. Everyone loves Michelle. Everyone loves South Florida. So share your love and like and subscribe. Oh, come to South Florida. We love you back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, as Michelle's been sharing, Pavan was sharing, ChatGPT, it can be a very valuable tool for the right work, right? For the, for the right tasks. Um, but ChatGPT and Angel AI, which if you um, follow this, this podcast, um, you may already know very different types of technology. So ChatGPT is 100% artificial intelligence. Um, if you've used it or other artificial intelligence apps, you know, you get that warning, it may generate incorrect information. As we've been talking about, you've got to go back through and make sure that it's correct or corrected. <laughs> um, it also doesn't tell you if it's just making things up, right? So Angel AI, on the other hand, is what's called augmented intelligence. And that's really important for two reasons. Um, one, anything Angel AI tells you is 100% warranted. 
to be a correct answer. So Angel AI was built specifically for the mortgage and real estate industries, which is a very complex industry, uh, highly regulated <laughs> industry, right? So when you ask Angel AI a question, you get a correct answer every time. Um, how does that happen? That's the augmented intelligence piece. So what happens is before you get a response with any AI, it gives a confidence score on the back end in its response. So with Angel AI, if that confidence score is anything under 100%, then a human being gets involved. So 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that augmented intelligence means there's always some level of human oversight that's available to make sure that you are getting accurate information, you're getting the assistance that you're looking for. So when it comes to your business and your clients, your clients' money, your money, getting the correct answer is paramount, right? Um, so that was how we rolled Angel AI out, is making sure that first things first, it is always accurate. Um, then came the focus on the speed. So you guys are going to notice it is getting faster and faster and faster. Um, the more we use it, the more it learns, the smarter it gets. So anytime a human being does have to get involved, that person then programs with the AI with that new information or what it is that they needed to do to complete that request. Um, so warranted answers is one part of the augmented intelligence. Um, the other is you can actually talk to Angel AI just like you were talking to a human being. So um, a lot of times people people are interested in prompts. Um, you hear about prompt engineering. How do I get it to do this? With the Angel AI, you can talk to it just like you were talking to a human um, because if for whatever reason, maybe the way you phrased the question or the request made the AI kind of step back and say, hmm, I'm not quite sure, gave it a 99% confidence score, a human being is going to get involved, take a look and either say, yep, that, that is another way of phrasing this question you already know, or again, help it out and give it the information. And then the AI has learned another way of phrasing the question. So that's another reason that the more, more people use it um, to ask questions, to just, there's so much nuance in our language, the smarter and faster Angel AI gets. Wow. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's not a LLM. Um, there's a lot of systems coming out right now on the, in the mortgage real estate market, which are basically plugins to chat GPT. And what they've done is they've they've just, like you were talking about prompts and setting up the prompts, right? What they've done is, is they've created a database of prompts and they're just prompting the LLM correctly. And, you know, that's not, that's not nothing. I mean, that, that is, that has value. Um, and it does do some, you can do some interesting things that way, but, to really do it right, where you can say, give it a bank statement or tax returns. And, and no matter how complex it is, it come out with the right income. Right? No LLM in the world can, can do that. There's no, no GPT based system that can do anything like that. It takes a very different kind of core underlying technology. And that's what, that's what we've developed and getting it to the point where, where we've been doing this now for four plus years getting to the point where it's right every single time. And so right that I put my money behind it, that if it's wrong, right, I'll write the check. Right? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that loan anyway. So as a real estate agent, as a real estate broker, uh, has, it, has it ever happened to you that, that you got a pre-approval and then the loan gets to decline once it's, once it's submitted to underwriting? Thankfully, not very often. And, and I'm an agent, so yes. yes. I, definitely yeah. happens i'm very grateful but yes it does and yeah. we mastermind on these kind of things frequently in my groups yeah. on how to um avoid that <laughs> yeah so so we solve that problem by basically saying let angel ai give you the answer and so if angel ai approves it and even if it got wrong, which it doesn't get wrong, but if, even if it got it wrong, we're going to stand behind it. So 
So that's where the, the big difference is. Um, so there's no like differences as a lender. Uh, now I'm putting, I'm taking my, my AI hat off and putting my lender hat on. Yes. <laughs> You need to have lender. like a sudden west on the back so you can just flip it around. <laughs> Y'all need to get the two hat two, yeah. <laughs> it's like that I love Lucy episode. You remember that one where he's in that that town and he's the mayor and he's a judge, he's the police officer. Anyway, I'm dating myself. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Sorry. Right. I only I only know the chocolate one. The That's because you saw it on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, lenders have a problem because human underwriters, nothing wrong with human underwriters, we, we, we need them. Um, they add value, but they it, it's because it's manual process. They don't know, they, if, if a un, human underwriter says, okay, I can do it this way, Right. They could make a mistake, right? It's human error. And so the whole lending process, if you actually watch the sausage get made through the sausage factory, is, is you have you have a person doing a job and you have another person checking the job and another person checking that checking jo checker's job and so forth. You have these layers of quality control before finally the button's pressed and and the funds are, are and, the, and the CTC is issued and the funds are released, right? And and that's why you have these these problems. So it's it's all about how fast you can check and 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 how how accurate, how well trained your staff is. Um, so especially in this business, when you have these these wild swings where suddenly you get this refi boom and you're and you're overloaded with with loans, then you're you're scrambling. Everyone's scrambling to hire underwriters and hire processors, and then you'll see the quality of the uh, approvals and, and the consistency go way down because all these people got to get retrained. Okay. And then, and then the flip side, when, you know, uh, times like this, when everyone's letting staff go, then you, you could see disruptions in, in quality as well. So with the machine, however, it, it runs the same all the time and it just runs continuously. Right. So this is difference between automated manufacturing and, and, and manual manufacturing. So, so the machine, in this case, Angel AI, gives an answer, right? It's, it's consistently right, and I can put my money behind it, or I cannot put my money behind uh, a group of humans, uh, and no lender does, okay? But I can put my money behind Angel AI, and that's, and that's the big, big, huge difference from a realtor and a loan officer perspective if you're watching this. But the really big thing, and we started this, this talk about we started this talk talking about marketing and growing a business using chat GPT. And the really big thing that Angel AI does is it, it takes that to the next level for, for realtors. Uh, so Angel, could you show Michelle how that works? Yeah, absolutely. So get ready to take your marketing and, and just like turbocharge it, Michelle. All right, I'm ready. It's a Tuesday, yeah. I need some excitement. <laughs> So Angel AI does free lead prospecting. So actually anything you use Angel AI for well, is I'm dropping the mic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so all you have to do is get your file of leads together. It could be one lead. It could be 100,000 leads. There's no limit. You provide the list to Angel AI and she will run phone campaigns and or email campaigns on your behalf. Um, and you actually get to provide your own email templates that you want used in the email campaigns. You can even provide your own phone script that will be used when calling on your leads. Um, it's not the AI that actually makes the phone calls because no one likes a robo call. Um, so Angel AI has her human assistants. Um, we call them Angelistas. They're all bilingual English and Spanish. And they are the ones that actually talk to the folks on your lead list. So they're going to follow your script that you provide. You can get as specific, as granular as you want. So you can say, you know, if they ask this, then say this. Um, but the goal for them is always to get someone who's interested on the phone with you right away. So if they are talking to someone who says, yeah, let me talk to Michelle. Um, I, interested in her services they're going to attempt to warm transfer that call live over to you 
Um, if you're not available, they're going to send you a follow up email with all the pertinent information from the phone call. So when you are free, you can get right back to that person. So, you know, Michelle, like you were saying, it's a it's your personal assistant. AI is your assistant. It doesn't take your place, but it allows you to focus your valuable time on the things that are going to produce results. So if you have a file of 100,000 leads, <laughs> you're not going to get through them all, no matter how many hours a day you spend on that cold calling. Um, but with Angel AI doing the call campaign for you, you're delivered on a platter. You know, these are the leads that are most likely to convert into a deal for you where you should spend your time. So uh, to get it started, I, in this example, I said, I have a file of leads for you to follow up on. Again, you talk to Angel AI just like you were talking to a person. So you don't have to say exactly what I said, but something along those lines. Um, the first time you're using Angel AI, she's going to ask for information about you. Um, so it's free to create an account. I definitely recommend creating an account because she gets to know you. Uh, like Michelle, you were saying how uh, ChatGPT gets to know you, your kind of tone of voice. Same thing with Angel AI. So uh, once you create an account, if you're using a feature like this where she needs to know your role as a realtor, what your license number is, what your office location is, uh, next time you use this feature, you won't have to. So it just makes it even faster and more efficient to use. Um, so once I gave her that information, she asked me for the file of leads. So I just use this little paperclip icon to attach documents. That's the way you give any document to Angel AI. Um, browse for my file. You see, I uploaded an Excel file. It can be just about in any format. Um, she asked me if they were buyer or seller leads. I said buyer, but if, for example, your spreadsheet has a column that says what type of lead they are, so it has both. Again, you talk to her just like you're talking to a person, so you could tell her both. Um, and then when you're providing your phone script or your email template, you can have both a buyer and a seller script. Uh, next, she asked me what I want her to do with the leads, phone campaign, email campaign, or both. So I said both. And then she's offering to you for, to let me give her a custom phone script, email template. So same thing, I use that paperclip icon to attach those files. And then she just confirms she'll contact leads on my behalf and keep me updated through daily reports. So in addition to just live connecting you with people who are ready to talk to you on the phone, you're also gonna get an email report with everything that was done on your leads. How many contacts were made, interested, not interested. You really get some really cool insight, uh, like demographic information on those leads. Um, if the, the Angelise does talk to someone who said, you know, I'm not, not thinking about it now, but you know, next summer we're gonna think about moving. You're going to have that information. So again, you you know when is a good time to follow up with that person. You're really making the best use of your time. To, to put this in perspective, I did a podcast like it's not almost a month ago um, with a big broker in Colorado, and and as as of that time, he had uploaded sixty thousand um, you know old old data that he had mined from different sources. And and he was getting like a dozen appointments a day being set for him. Um, and he's just over the top with it. So and literally, I mean, he's like the amount of work I would have to do to get a dozen appointments a day set up. I would need an army of virtual assistants to do this. And it's just like happening automatically. And the other key point here is, is that the AI itself is not making the call. There's actually bilingual humans that make the call. And these humans are guided and prompted by the AI so that it goes really, really fast. And we're getting where that's why we're able to do this uh, basically for free because the cost, are, you know, it's not zero, but it's it's low enough that, as you said earlier, yeah. Michelle, is is you got to add value you, to build a relationship. You have to add value. Right? You have to to help and support. You have to help and support your um, your clients. It's like you help and support your buyers and sellers, 
and you get involved with them and you engage. And this is our way of helping and supporting both our, our realtors, our loan officers, our mortgage broker partners, uh, everyone. So if we can help and support you to grow your business, you know, um, through my tech company, uh, maybe, you know, not required to, you have absolutely no obligation, but you might feel inclined to, to, uh, to work with my mortgage company. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love it. I think yeah. it's a, a win-win. Yeah. So, like, um, we're tired. Agents are tired. Loan officers, everybody's a little tired right now. No, well, no joke, right? So like if you can take some of that heavy lifting and that mental fatigue and the worry, right? Of how am I going to get this done? Or I'm going to, uh, it's a solution to an age old problem as to why agents don't make calls and why they drop the ball with follow-ups and things like that. Yes. They, they, it's because of the feeling of, it's almost like giving up, right? It, it, they feel like, okay, I've already made five hours of call straight. I didn't get anything. And is this the highest? They start questioning themselves. This is the highest and best use of my time, right? And then ultimately, when you start getting into that, that loop of questioning what you're doing, you end up doing nothing, right? Because then, then you, you, you get paralyzed in, in uh, like a deer in the headlights, right? You get paralyzed at what to do next. So this way, the most mundane stuff can be moved off to a computer, which is what computers are good at. They're good at doing the mundane routines, regular stuff. I think stuff. you hit the nail on the head with that word. It's the yeah. mundane. And that's scary to a lot of agents and loan officers, especially if you're creative. It's like the worst, one of the worst words, right? Is mundane. It's like, oh, do I really have to input that listing? Do I have to upload those photos? It's that kind of stuff, you know? Yes. So the phone call for sure. Yes. And, and you know, it, one of my agents was talking about, um, like he literally met a potential client. He was at a sports bar and I was talking to him. And, and then he literally met him at the sports bar. He wrote down his name and information on a, on a bar napkin. He took a picture of it, gave it to Angel AI, right? And two weeks later, now the guy's in, the guy's in escrow, right? So it, it helped him out. It helped his, his realtor out that he works with regularly. Right. And, and it's like everybody won and, and he just used the technology for what it's meant to do. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's not like you have to do a lot of data entry, literally to use your phone camera, take a picture and go. Well, I think that what Angel was just saying to uploading the document that has the contacts on it versus yeah. having to, you know, um, definitely. I think this is very exciting. Yeah, because AIs can read pictures. People forget that. Take a picture. No, of people don't know that. <laughs> you know that because you're super smart. But I'm telling you, it's like it's like when you teach something, and somebody said this to me one time. They said, "Yeah, but for don't forget, um, the things that you think aren't really relevant or important are things that." a lot of agents don't know because they haven't been doing this as long. So go back to the basics. Sometimes you have to just go back. So I think it's that they don't know. Like I didn't, I really didn't know that AI could look at a photo like that. I didn't know that. Yeah. And, well, and I think that's, you just made the case as to why we do these podcasts every week. And yeah. there's always, you know, it's, it's only one hour. There's always, there's always a few really good pieces of, of, uh, of information, a few good kernels that I think anybody who watches these will, will pull out. Yeah. So with, there's another idea for the, the lead prospecting, going back to, we we're talking at the top of this call about conferences and networking. And, you know, you leave a conference with a stack of business cards and what are you going to do with all of these? Um, you know, best case without Angel AI, you're spending all the time doing that data entry, getting them into your CRM or um, however you're documenting that contact information, lay them all out, take a picture of it, send it to Angel AI <laughs> and have her start contacting them. And, and you just give her the script thing. Hey, contact these people. This is what I want to say. I have an idea. Do either of you use a digital business card? I have one. Yeah. Okay. So I use blank. 
Uh, some people use, I think, something called Popple. So I love it because I can get the contact information from a buyer seller agent. Hey, what's your cell phone number? I'll send you my digital card. That's a hack, guys, by the way, instead of handing out your card. Not you guys, but anybody listening. Get a digital card. They're free. You can put a QR code on it. But here's my thought. In the contacts, which I have all these contacts in there, I can literally take those contacts and upload them into Angel AI. So I'm not even, thankfully, I come back with a little stack these days. I'm like, no, 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 just here, here, what's your number? <laughs> <laughs> um, but to that point, you'd have a hybrid of the little stack, but then you've already got people in this contact database with your mm -hmm. digital card that you could upload, especially I'm big on agent to agent referrals and getting on my global referral map. So mm -hmm. this would be a great way to do that with, with some of the digital cards that we have, because the stuff's just sitting there, let's face it. <laughs> yep, that, that's exactly right. That is the reason we came up with this, because as, as I talk to agents, they're all were telling me like, oh, yeah, I got, I can't follow up with all this and I can't afford a, uh, to hire another assistant or whatever. And I'm like, well, this is so easy for the AI to do. Or they don't want to pay their kids to do it. <laughs> That's child labor. Let's not do that. What? <laughs> See, my kids are 28 and 33. Different times. <laughs> um, I love it. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you guys, anyone watching, you want to learn more about uh, Angel AI, get some ideas how to integrate it into your business, we do offer live workshops. Um, so if you go to angelai.com, you can click right here, ask Angel AI now and just start talking to her um, or click here for workshop registration. So again, they're live workshops. Um, we keep them small groups, so you're working directly with a certified Angel AI trainer. They'll walk you hands-on through some different exercises, help you create your free account, um, and again, just give you some more ideas of how you can integrate it into your business. So um, angelai.com and click on, click here for workshop registration and we'll get you all set. Yeah, and it's and it's really amazing. It's only one hour, and you will understand like all the basics. Uh, it won't teach you everything about Angel AI, but you'll know enough to get to work and start making money with it. And then you can always um, ask, or you can always tell her that, "Hey, I want more training. Can you hook me up with the trainer?" Mm -hmm. And I want another thirty minutes. I want to I want to refresh her about X Y Z. And and Angel AI will connect you, and one of our trainers will do that. So. So we we not only have the AI, but we also have a skilled support team, the human beings to help you along the way. Um, so you can master both. And it's all for free. It's all here. It's all free. And, and so if I also, log in as a realtor, you're, it's a free platform? Completely free. Wow. That's huge. So I'm, I'm going to play around with it. I'll have some time after today, actually, which will be great. Right. And then the other big exciting news that you're all going to hear it first today was we just released into our, our user test environment and Angel, Human Angel just got a chance to, to play with it all morning, which is a, a big, long-awaited upgrade of our AI that I've been talking about for months. It's like, I'm seeing this in lab, guys. This is great. You're going to love it. Now, Angel's finally got her hands on it. Um, and so it's it's... It's a new model, uh, or so it's not a new model, but it's we've we've upgrade. we've solved a number. It's an upgrade. We've solved a number of really difficult technical engineering problems, and now it's like amazingly fast. Okay, so there is a a it's it's not in production yet. I think by the time I mean it's been we released it this morning for uh, for user testing. The bug reports are already coming in, so uh, I, I. But they're they're all like simple, very manageable, uh, manageable bugs. Nothing. I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen it do anything crazy. <laughs> so, and I haven't. I haven't seen it be wrong. It's just just not smooth. So um, I'm thinking probably in the next three to four weeks it will be in full production, and then and then we have the the whole package. It's gonna. It's fast and 100% accurate and reliable all the time. 
and that is that is huge. So right now, uh, in the current version, in the current production version, um, you could, depending on what you ask, it could be waiting anywhere from 30 seconds to a couple of minutes to um, to get an answer. Nato, can you show them what they can do right now, what the workaround is? If While you're waiting, you don't have to actually sit there and stare at the screen. There's a workaround. Yeah, absolutely. So, and Michelle, I think you mentioned earlier, you, you use AI just like it's your personal assistant. And that's when I'm using Angel AI, that's 100% how I think of it. So as Pavan mentioned, the, with the current version, sometimes you're gonna get immediate response. Other times she's gonna say, you know, please give me a moment, uh, you know, I'll have the answer in five minutes or whatever that uh, time frame is. Um, so when you have an account, one thing, she already has your contact information. So if you completely close out the application, she's gonna send you a text and an email when the answer is available. So you don't have to just hang out in the app. Uh, but the other thing is you can have as many conversations going with Angel AI at once as you want. Um, so that's what I'll show right here. I like that. Time. Yeah, because sometimes you have these thoughts. You're like, oh, let me start this. Let me start this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if you have multiple questions or multiple requests for Angel AI, um, you can just type in your question or your request. You start a new errand. We call them errands because she's your assistant. So you're sending her on an errand, um, but it's just a new conversation. Type in your question or request, start another one. And you can see, I'm just like rapid firing, <laughs> um, but you can already see I haven't got all my questions out and I have new messages coming in. So when I'm using Angel AI, that's really how I think of it as like, I sent a text message or an instant message to my assistant, hey, figure this out. And then just know that the answer is gonna come in and it's gonna come in accurately while I move on to the next thing I need to do, whether it's ask her more <laughs> or uh, you know switch out of the app and do something else. So it's sort of like you get to be Anne Hathaway in Devil Wears Prada. <laughs> Yeah, Angel AI is Anne Hathaway. Uh, Angel AI is Anne Hathaway. Uh, Glenn, uh, Glenn Close. Glenn, Glenn Close. Close. Yeah. Yes, you can say, "Where's my latte?" Angel, where's my latte? That would be yeah, is that coming in? Is that coming What's in the girl? next release? <laughs> Coffee delivery. <laughs> uh, that's one of my favorite movies. <laughs> and that's why that's why they're called errands because you're you're giving yeah. your an errand to run. Yeah. And, Love and, it. Yeah. I'll play around with it. That's what I like to do with new stuff, yes. you know, new technology. It's like, that's what you have to do. You have to play around with these things and see how to use them and how to leverage them. Look, time is money. And I will say this to anyone who's like a seasoned, maybe midlife older agent, right? Or even loan officer, you know, we sometimes want that time back you know there's a different sense of drive with what we do in our different chapters of our business lives and so anything to me right now that saves me time and i don't have to run around on weekends necessarily is like very important to me because i like spending time with my adult children one's a flight attendant so i can i can do some traveling right and so i try and condense everything to the week not the weekends makes makes perfect sense yeah so this is great i love this yeah and then the other thing is it's really smart in that if you if it does something you don't like you don't like what is answered or you don't whatever it is maybe you found a bug hopefully there's no bugs or whatever it is that you you see it do you don't like or you disagree with right and it's so easy all you do is you just tell her i don't like this I don't like your answer or or this took too long or whatever and if you just tell her that it she automatically escalates to the engineering team so it's also built in tech support on the fly you don't have to hit any of the special buttons and and that kind of blows people's minds because like in in microsoft bing the way they implemented it is if you don't like it you have to hit you have to go find that button to hit and say i don't like this answer okay and that's how they're training their AI, but we're actually much more intuitive. It's it's a single button concept. Everything happens on that input line. So you just tell her how you feel. She needs to know how you feel. And if you tell her how you feel, she will respond accordingly. And that's what the other thing that we have in it is empathy. We call it empathetic technology. So you can tell her how you feel 
or she's also guessing how you feel based on your responses. Exciting. It is super exciting and and super disappointing because our one hour has come to a close. We can, we're having <laughs> we're so much that. fun. All good things come to an end. All good things come to an end and we both learned some things today. Yes. We both gave away some good free stuff. Lots of free stuff. Everyone likes free stuff, but our free stuff is immensely valuable. Yes. The, the tips you gave are incredible. Um, and Angel AI, of course, is free for all realtors and, and loan officers. And we only scratched the surface today on what it could do. So don't forget to go to angelai.com, click the workshop button, attend a workshop, and then you can get a more detailed deep dive. And these are live, interactive, almost one-on-one -on -one sessions with our trainers. So you, yeah. you get you get real, real, you know, uh, real, real coaching. I love it. Yeah. So angelai.com, get on a workshop. Uh, make sure you check in Lycan on Lending, the podcast, so you can learn all about AI and what I'm most excited to learn about when it will become conscious uh, um, from Pavan. And remember to uh, check out Michelle's website, sipsocialcell.com for more of her coaching resources. And uh, tell us one more time, Michelle, your... Uh, your, for on social media where they can find you? Oh, you can uh, reach out to me at the Michelle B, like the bumblebee. So M-I-C-H-E-L-E-B, -E 